How are you doing guys? Moose here and welcome to season 4. This is episode 1 of our West Ham United crew mode in season 4. Getting into the 2015-2016 season. So that is fantastic that we're finally here. As you can see we're just forwarding through and we get things going here as we will take a look at uh, you know what kind of money we have to work with, what we're going to learn. As we can see we get our league objective here as we get into July 1st. And our league objective to qualify for the Champions League, which we've already done this past season. So that's certainly my goal as well because, you know, we don't want to take a step backwards and not be in the Champions League next year. So we want to continue with that. And look at this budget we just got. $24.5 million, 120000 wage budget. That is unreal. So that's just fantastic for us that we're going to have that uh, to work with for our transfers, which will be unbelievable, which we're going to actually get into our targets and things like that. Uh, in this episode, that's why I'm going to discuss. But like I said, we're going to get through this little bit of stuff uh, beforehand before we get into the targets. So uh, next thing we're going to look at here is our Champions League objective, which reached the semifinal. That's a little, I mean, it's a little ridiculous. Obviously, I'm sure they want us to do well. It's not our main objective. But that said, you know, reaching the semifinal in the first Champions League we've been in is, you know, that's going to be very tough for us. But we'll see what we can do. Obviously, we want to, we want to at least, you know, qualify for the group stages and get out of the group stages. Hopefully, they also want us to win a uh, domestic cup, which we've done the past two years. We won the chance, or, uh, the Capital One Cup last year and the uh, FA Cup the year before that. So that's definitely possible for us. So we'll see how we can do there. But take a look at our youth squad and look at this. Donardo, goalkeeper, 81 and 94 potential is unbelievable. So we're certainly going to offer him a contract, and he actually could take over that backup uh, goalkeeping spot behind Butland and take over for Suarez who's now I believe 33 years old and you know we he's just not good enough to play that position I think Donardo could take that over. we also have Dementes here who just looks fantastic 71 to 94 potential and we also have um, Sergio Vega here 72 to 94 who we're gonna offer a contract because he's 17 and could fit into the squad so that's what we're doing with our youth squad and like I said now we're going to get into our transfer targets and see what we can do with them so hope you guys have uh, you know can continue to check this one out so all right guys so we're gonna start this uh, you know review as the players we're looking at and the team with a squad report just to get an idea of what we have on the team so we're gonna sort them by position here and as you can see you know we have goalkeepers to start off we have Butlin and Suarez obviously is our backup. Butlin for sure is number one. But I think if we take a look at the U squad right after this, uh, just for another look, we have a goalkeeper coming through the ranks that we could possibly use should we want to get rid of Suarez. But uh, now getting into our uh, defensive players, we have Jordan Spence as our lone right back. But obviously we could, we're looking for someone because we had to schedule on loan last year and potentially might want to bring him in this year. Uh, and we'll see what other targets we might have. Uh, Kalas is here, uh, center back, Martin Zindi, Wilson, Winston Reed, and Tompkins. So clearly we're really strong at center back. Um, you know, not much movement there. Cresswell we have is our starting left back. We also have Daniel Potts. And, and Wilson and Martin Zindi can both play left back. So they're very versatile and it gives us a lot of depth at that position. Moving forward into midfield here, we'll just scroll down here to take a look. As you can see, we have Steven Oliver and Eckersley, who are two CDMs. Uh, Oliver, I'm looking to maybe loan out or even sell because he's just, you know, he's not at, he has an actual probably higher value uh, in the long run than Eckersley. But like I said, Eckersley just fits more to the team right now and can probably play and not be as much of a liability. Uh, in terms of other midfielders, we have Collison and Redmond both with that right midfield position, but they can kind of play in different positions. Redmond can play on both sides. Collison, I think, might be, uh, he's a guy that I'm probably looking to offload this season just because I think we can get better value there and we can use him to kind of, you know, pick up an even better player, use the funds we can get from him just to increase our budget, which we already know is, you know, sky high anyways right now this season. But uh, that said, I think Collison could be someone we can move uh, to look for someone better. Uh, Suzuko, obviously, he's unbelievable. Look at those statistics. It's just one of the best players on this career mode no doubt in any league he's unbelievable only 84 but he's just stupendous and uh, he's certainly not going anywhere unless I got some ridiculous 50 million bid but no way is he going anywhere he's our rock he really holds his team together and I don't think we're gonna be looking to get rid of him uh, Ravon Morrison is unbelievable he's really fit into the team I think he works well 
uh, in midfield with Redmond, both of them on the wings. So I think Ravel Morris is certainly saving his position. Diami, uh, he's someone we could offload for funds, but that said, I don't necessarily want to lose him. If we did lose him, it'd be good for Eckersley because it'll allow him to get a few more games. But, you know, Diami's fantastic for us, and we don't necessarily want to get rid of him. Uh, we have Mark Noble here. Uh, he's certainly not going anywhere. He's been instrumental. He's fantastic last season for us. Really came back and uh, stepped back in form after struggling in season two. Uh, so Mark Noble certainly be on the team. Trotman's out on loan. He's someone I might sell as well because he hasn't really developed well. He only went plus two over the entire length of, um, you know, from January on last season while being on loan, and he was playing it somewhere in League One or League Two, so he should have went up very well. So he's someone we might look to get rid of. Uh, when he comes back from loan this month just because it'll give us a little bit of funds and he's not going to make his way back into the team, I don't think. Jim Barrow, obviously, what can we say about him? He's unbelievable. Look how well-rounded he is. He has one green statistic, but literally every other statistic is in the 70s, which is unbelievable. So he can work his way in cam. He can work his way in the left midfield we've played him on. So he has a few positions he can slot into that allows us to keep him around and play very well with him. Bonaparte, obviously, we're stacked in terms of attacking-wise with just top-ranked players. We have Bonaparte, uh, Aubameyang, obviously, Lacazette up front. Certainly going to be our top two again this season. Benzia looking to have a little bit better return than he did last year. I think he only had eight or nine goals in about 25, 26 games. So not a great return from him. But that said, it wasn't bad considering he didn't really have regular playing time. I think we're going to try to get him in there a bit more this year because uh, we have the size of some youngsters. But Del Grosso, as you can see, He's unhappy, thinks he should play more, and I think this might be the time just to offload him and get as much money as we can uh, for Del Grosso just because, you know, we could use it, and he's complaining about not playing, but he's not going to get uh, in head of the team ahead of Aubameyang or Lacazette, so we'll see what we can do there. Uh, we also have Robert Hall hanging around, so I think if we get rid of Del Grosso, we still have Hall, we still have Benzia, guys who can, uh, you know, hang around there. Uh, we will miss Del Grosso with the height. He's unbelievable in the air. Even though his heading accuracy is poor and his jumping is not great, but he's just so tall that he was fantastic. So we'll see, but he's someone that we could get rid of. Let me know what you guys think about that as well as the other players I'm talking about potentially transferring. Let me know what you think we should do. And uh, so that's that with the team. I think we're pretty strong. We might need someone in, uh, you know, on the wings in midfield potentially. Uh, we're pretty strong CDM and cam-wise, but maybe someone left midfield, right midfield. Even a central midfielder if we want to play that type of game. Possibly another striker, just because, like I said, we have uh, Benzia, Lacazette, Aubameyang. But besides that, not too much in that way. So we will see uh, what we're looking at. But here's the short list. Obviously, we'll have some guys that are kind of long shots. We're not really looking at them. Lovren, obviously, would be unbelievable to pick up. But we'd have to get rid of someone and still give up a ton of money to pick up a guy like Dayan Lovren. So... Uh, Nangalo was someone that we really went after last year but weren't able to bring him in. He would be someone I would still love to bring in if I would get rid of, say, uh, Danny Wilson and swap him for Mangala would be unbelievable. But we'll see. Lascelles, Camparisi, someone that I've been trying to get since Season 1. So uh, he also could be someone we bring in, obviously. That's to be seen. Pogba, we're not bringing in Paul Pogba. He's just kind of a sky-high idea. Say we were to get rid of uh, Suzuko, Pogba could be a replacement, but at this point, I'm certainly happy with Suzuko and not looking to get rid of him. Uh, Daniel Toro Marseille is actually, he looks unbelievable. Look at the finishing. He's got great sprint speed. Uh, his ball control dribbling is really strong. Uh, and he's at Real Madrid. High, low work rates, but he only plays in that center forward, kind of the, you know, he has a Filippo type position which would make it tough for him to break in the team, but he would be unbelievable. Someone that I would I would play him in a striker role, to be honest. He has that high-low work rate, and uh, you know he could be someone we could even bring in uh, to play alongside Benzia as like our second strike force. Uh, so we shall see what goes on there. Obviously, if he, I don't know if he'd want to leave Real Madrid, uh, only if he wants more playing time, but we'll see. Uh, Victor Wanyama is someone that uh, you know I would love to bring in. I think if we got rid of Diame, Wanyama would strengthen midfield for sure. So that would be unbelievable to bring him in. Um, but that said, we'll see. But he would be unbelievable. He's at Barcelona. He's been sitting on the bench there. So I think he'd be happy uh, with a move if that happened. Leitner, who we've gone after for a bunch of years. But look at him. His value skyrocketed from about 6.5 up to $13 million in the course of four or five months, so I don't think he's necessarily in our price range anymore. Uh, 
for what we would want him to do. He does play a range of positions, which is unbelievable. But, you know, his technical skills aren't fantastic. So, you know, but he could be someone we could bring in. Let me know what you guys think uh, in terms of these targets. Obviously, Willems is a left back. We don't really need a left back at this moment in time. We, we have Cresswell, Martin, Zinni, Wilson, who can all play that position. Uh, Saka Vertiz is just unbelievable. That's why I kept him on here. Uh, this is one of my main guys I was really looking at. So Andre Schroh, obviously I know in real life he's moved to Chelsea, but I think he would just be fantastic since we don't really have a starting left mid since Jarvis has left. And he has, look at him, he has the sprint speed, he has the crossing ability that Jarvis had, but he also has finishing, dribbling, ball control. His long shots and shot power are unreal. He would be unbelievable. You can even play him. I know he can play in a striker role, so if we got rid of Del Grosso, look at that. A makeshift striker replacement for him. And he can also play tons of other positions for us. So I think he would be unbelievable to bring in. But we shall see. Uh, let me know what you guys think uh, in terms of bringing in Shirley. I would love to bring him in. So, uh, But Piatti, another guy I looked at in Season 1, but look at his value. He's just unbelievable. He's actually... You know, the same overall, but he's got a uh, higher value, which is interesting, considering all the green attributes that Sherl has. So, Piatti would be fantastic, but obviously, Sherl's might be a bit more affordable. McKay Stevens, another guy. Perishik, I think, is a fan. Look at his technical stats are unbelievable. I think he would be a cheap option compared to Shirley, or, or Sherl, however you want to pronounce it. But I think he'd be a cheap option should we go that route, which would be unbelievable. Uh, someone who can just, you know, look at his finishing. He's unbelievable as a left mid. Uh, Oxley chamberlain I don't think Arsenal would sell him to us, but, you know, he's a good player. Uh, Haley's a right back that we could look to bring in. Also, Adam Matthews. <coughs> Excuse me. Guys I had my eyes on. Just in case we can't bring him to Skiglio, just because, you know, playing for us, his value probably went up, and it'd be tougher to bring him in. But that said, we have all these funds, and we're going to see what we can do with them. James Force, another guy that can play out on the wings. Right mid, left mid, he's got that high low, and look at his crossing and sprint speed. He'd be a great uh, Jarvis type player if we wanted to bring in someone like that who's younger but basically is Matt Jarvis. So, uh, another option, Ince, uh, Sturridge, these are guys we kind of looked at last year, but I'm not really looking to bring them in. Lukaku, Andy Carroll would be unbelievable. If he was our third striker just to rotate through, he'd be like Del Grosso, but just 900 times better would be unreal to bring him back to West Ham. But uh, those are our targets, so I hope you guys have enjoyed this look. I hope you let me know what you think of these targets, who you think we should bring in. Love to hear your feedback, and uh, thanks, guys. Hope you have a good one, and we'll see you in the next episode, obviously. Uh, so, bye-bye.